We said uh, magnets, quick review of where we left off. Magnets are dipolar, they have two poles, north and south. Uh, unlike charge though, charge we can isolate one single positive, we can isolate one single negative. We said that for magnets, we cannot isolate charge. So we cannot isolate poles. Hang on here. Sorry, let's try that again. We said you can't isolate a single pole, nor all pole. If you break a magnet in half, you're gonna automatically have a north and a south pole. Uh, we said we have a magnetic field. That's what acts on another magnet or a piece of metal causing it to move. And we said magnetic fields are vectors and they have direction. We said all fields point from north to south. Uh, this led us to some confusion because we said also all magnetic fields point in the same direction a compass points. A compass points south. And I went on a little rant where many of you said, wait a minute, Mr. Duick, I think a compass points north. It does not. A compass points south. But the reason is, inside the Earth, a magnetic field is uh, backwards. By the way, I forgot to fill this in. So all of you where it says magnitudes, I was wondering why I hadn't mentioned it and suddenly I realized I forgot to fill that part in. Just to put things into context, the Earth's magnetic field is around 10 to the negative 7 Teslas. It varies. A very large field is 1 Tesla. One Tesla would affect your health. If you were living in a one Tesla magnetic field, your health would deteriorate over time. Okay? Wouldn't be good for you. We said that there were two main types of magnets, fridge magnets and electromagnets. We looked at electric field lines. We said, oh, it turns out for the Earth, the south magnetic pole is in the north geographic pole and the north magnetic pole is in the south geographic pole. We got a problem, Michael, because we also talk about magnetic north. When people talk about magnetic north, they do mean up here, even though it's magnetic south. Well, I can't change that. The, the navigators are wrong. We drew in some magnetic field lines. We talked about some drawings. We said we're going to be drawing three-dimensionally. X's will be showing into the board. Dots will be showing out of the board. X's, tail feathers of an arrow, retreating away from you into your page, a dot, tail feathers of an arrow coming out of the page towards you. And then we came to the right-hand rules. We said we want to get some directions. And the first right-hand rule says this. If a wire is carrying current, it generates a magnetic field. You point your right thumb, that's right, Ashley, in the direction of the current, and your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. What that also means, by the way, Elijah, is for alternating current, which is what comes out of most of our plugs, alternating current generates a net magnetic field of zero because it's, it's a chip flipping back and forth. We really don't need to take it into account very much. Direct current is what generates a strong magnetic field. And we have to take that into account. You may hear it sometimes, for example, if you have a car stereo that squeals as you accelerate, somewhere you've got some problems in your circuitry and there's a magnetic field affecting the speakers. You may have occasionally heard if someone has put their cell phone on my uh, little table here, if it's been receiving texts, you may hear it come through the speakers, some kind of a vibration noise that's because it's sending out a magnetic field interfering with the speakers. And I think we left off right here, right? Pause. Solenoids. If we take a piece of wire and we coil it around and around and around and around and around and around in many loops, always going in the same direction, not all of a sudden changing direction, we call this resulting coil of wires A solenoid. A very useful electric device. I even have a picture of one. My friend lives in a very, very old building, and I noticed that his fire alarm is, uh, has a solenoid. There's the coil of wires right there. A bunch of wires wrapped around and around and around and around and around and around and around. around, around. What would the direction of the magnetic field generated by a solenoid be? Well, you can sort of think of it as a whole bunch of wires. Uh, here's a typical solenoid. We can dramatically increase the strength of the magnetic field produced by a solenoid by adding an iron core at its center because then the iron core also becomes magnetized. We call this an electromagnet and it has
lots of uses. You know what? Probably in the millions. It gives us a magnet that we can turn on and off. A very basic one, most of your electronic locks on a car, all you're doing is you're turning a magnet on, clunk, that's pulling the lock down, and then you're reversing the current in the magnet, clunk, now it's pushing the lock away. Done. Okay. How do you figure out the direction? Here is the right-hand solenoid rule. You imagine holding the solenoid in your hand. You curl your right fingers in the direction of the current. Your thumb points to the north <laughs> pole of the electromagnet. Say what? Go back to this picture here. I'm going to zoom in like crazy. If I follow this current from positive, it looks like it ducks behind and then comes over the front like that. Is that okay? If I want to figure out what direction the north pole of this electromagnet is, I pretend to hold it in my hand. So I'd either have to hold my hand this way, right hand, this way or this way. I curl my fingers in the direction of the current. Curling this way would be wrong, wouldn't it? I have to hold my hand this way. Which way is my thumb pointing, up or down? That's the north pole of this electromagnet. That's the south pole of this electromagnet. There are three right-hand rules. The first one is the right-hand rule for a current-carrying wire. The second one is the right-hand solenoid rule. Okay, So the right-hand solenoid rule. Uh, example four says, what direction is the magnetic field below? I didn't give you a solenoid. I just drew a little square there because I also wanted to show you how to draw a solenoid. So we're going to draw one together. First of all, we're going to put a battery right there so the positive is pointing to the left. And we're going to have the wires go underneath. And then here's how you draw a solenoid. Just watch for a second and look up. This is how you make it look three-dimensional. You draw long, elongated capital S's. See how that's working? That is sort of looking like it's wrapped around, yes? So draw that. You could have drawn the S's the other way, but I drew them that way. Backwards S's in my case. Forwards S's also work, but let's all draw backwards S's so our pictures look the same. What direction is the magnetic field in this solenoid? Well, I have to figure out... Oh, you guys are still writing this down. Okay. That capital S trick works well. It, makes them, it does make it look sort of three-dimensional, right? <laughs> Neve, current is flowing this way. Yes? Underneath? Yes? Which means it's coming over the top towards me. I think the current is flowing this way if we use our imagination. Is that correct? So hold the solenoid in your right hand and curl your fingers in the direction of the current. You cannot do this flat-handed, Josh, my friend. You must hold the solenoid in your right hand and curl your fingers in the direction of the current. Josh, the current is not this sideways. Hold, it's either this way or it's that way if you're looking at your flat piece of paper, right? Which way? Turn your hand around the other way. Other way. There, like that. Yes? Your fingers are curling towards you. Yes? Which way is your thumb pointing, to the right or to the left? This is the north pole. This is the south pole. The magnetic field inside the solenoid would look like this. If I draw a magnetic field line, it would go... D -d 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 Out here it would point that way, point that way, point that way. Outside above the solenoid, it's pointing to the left. Now inside the solenoid, it's pointing to the right, because that's how it gets back to the north. What would happen if instead of having direct current, what would happen if you hooked this up to an alternating current? Ah, 
you would have a magnetic field that pointed this way, then this way, then this way, then this way, then you'd have an oscillating magnetic field. And Jordan, if you were to put a little piece of metal right here, the metal with a magnet on it, the metal would be repelled, attracted, repelled, attracted, repelled, attracted. This is how fire alarm bells work. Ding, 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 ding. Inside those fire alarms, I guarantee there's a solenoid. In fact, not only do I guarantee there's a solenoid, I showed you the picture. This is my friend's fire alarm. They didn't, back then, they didn't bother covering it up. All this is, is there's a magnet right here that's going to be alternately repelled and attracted, repelled, and as it moves back and forth, it's going to cause this clapper at the top to go ding, 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 ding. Very, very easy. Piece of cake. Uh, all of your cell phones that vibrate, that's a solenoid doing that with an oscillating magnetic field. Easiest way to get something to vibrate. Piece of cake. Solenoids are used all over the place. The old style telephones that actually used to ring had solenoids in them, or the old style um, doorbells that actually used to make a ringing noise had just a solenoid in them. Just like, again, this same setup here. You get it to vibrate back and forth with an alternating current, and you get a ringing noise. Yep. What about like paint shakers? Paint shakers? Uh, I'd have to see whether they use a rotational off-center weight because uh, there's another way you can get vibrations. If you've ever looked at the inside of uh, Xbox or, or uh, PlayStation joysticks, when they vibrate, there what they have is a rotating motor with a weight that's off-center so that the weight moves back and forth. I'd have to see how the, how the paint shaker worked. But I'm pretty sure your cell phones don't have an off-center electric motor. I'm pretty sure in them it's a solenoid. So we use solenoids in transformers, the electric devices, not the toys. Motors, generators, televisions, speakers, doorbells, fire alarm bells, cell phones, power door locks, etc., 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 etc. Okay. So we have right hand rule number one: current carrying wire. Right hand rule number two: the rule for a solenoid. Let's practice this. I've just given you some practice questions. I call them right-hand rules. There's three right-hand rules. We've just looked at two right now. <coughs> so right-hand rule questions. Questions that you can do right now. Uh, take a look at question number two, which is actually on the next page over. It says, uh, oh, sorry, nope, let me take that back. Can't do that one yet. Can't do that one yet. Uh, not yet. Here we go. Number six. Number six. <coughs> Which of the following diagrams, it says, best illustrates the magnetic field lines around a wire carrying conventional current in the direction shown? First of all, look at the picture. What direction is the current? What are they trying to show here? Okay, it's out of the page towards us. So we use our first right-hand rule. You point your right thumb in the direction of the current, and that tells you the direction of the magnetic field. What's the correct answer, A, B, C, or D? Right? Is that okay, Harjo? Yeah? Number nine. Number nine. <clears throat> it says a DC power supply is connected to a solenoid, as shown in the diagram above. The direction of the magnetic field inside the solenoid and the polarity of the solenoid, respectively, will be. I find I can't do these until I draw arrows for the actual current. So uh, current goes this way, this way. Looks like it ducks underneath. It looks like it's coming over the top upwards. Is that right, folks? So imagine holding that solenoid with your right hand. Curl your fingers in the direction so it's over the top. Josh, which way is your right thumb pointing, to the left or to the right? So is X the North Pole or is Y the North Pole? That's North, that's South, yes, no, yes, no. So the answer is either A or C. Now remember what we said was that means the magnetic field line 
goes outside from north to south, but then when it's going through the solenoid on the inside, which way is it pointing? Inside, it's going from y to x. No, no, yes, yes. Correct answer is C. Number 10 says both point P and the electrical circuit are in the plane of the page. In other words, they're at the same height. Imagine they're sitting on your piece of paper, as shown. What's the direction of the magnetic field at point P? Point P, is it closer to the bottom wire, the top wire, the left wire, or the right wire? Bottom wire, that's the wire that's going to dominate the magnetic field. So let's follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. Which way is the current moving in that bottom wire that's going to be the dominant magnetic field? To the left. So this is the current carrying wire. The first magnetic, the first right hand rule. Point your right thumb to the left. What direction is the magnetic field at point P? So for you guys, I would point my thumb that way. My fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Which way are they pointing above the wire right now? Help me out, folks. By the way, you can't possibly do this with a pen in your hand. Ashley, right hand, right hand, yep, okay. On this side, closest to you guys, what direction is the magnetic field? Upwards. Level with the page, which way are my fingers pointing? Which, based on this, would be A, B, C, or D? A, into the page, folks into the page. Underneath the wire, the magnetic field would be pointing downwards, down the page. And below the wire, like in this area, magnetic field be coming towards me. <clears throat> number 14. Try number 14 on your own right now, please. Try number 14 on your own. You'll probably find it easier to hold your right hand near the picture. I see Hakeem with his hand over here. It can be done, but you're making it tougher. And I, yeah, you know what? The other thing I find a lot of kids... You can either, Hakeem, lower your hand to your desk or you can raise the paper to your hand. Either of them are perfectly acceptable. Hakeem, what do you think? A, B, C, or D? I can't hear you. A. Point your right thumb in the direction of the current. My fingers are curling that way. Okay? That's right hand rule number one. Show me a solenoid. Have I got more? Nope. Okay, back to our notes. Okay. It said, uh, example, in uh, figure 7.9, the conductor on the left is carrying current into the page. The conductor on the right is carrying current out of the page. What are the lines of magnetic force? Let's do the one into the page. What direction are the magnetic field lines? Clockwise or counterclockwise? So for the left-hand one into the page, I think the magnetic field lines are in this direction, yes? What about coming out of the page? Well, that's going to look like this. Counterclockwise, yes? And you'll notice you have an overlap right here in the middle. These two fields complement each other 
Between those two wires, what direction is the magnetic field right there? The net magnetic field when they're combined, what direction? Downwards, pretty strong, pretty strong, okay? Pretty strong. Would these conductors repel or attract each other? Hmm. Well, do I have the same magnetic force between them, or do I have opposite magnetic fields between them? The same? So what can you tell me about like magnetic fields? They would actually get pushed apart. You can sometimes see that when you're designing circuits. They actually have to glue or spike the wires down to the circuit to keep them in place. Otherwise, they'll slowly over time push each other apart. That's not good. <coughs> try example six on your own. I'll freeze the screen. Let's do it up. I'll do it up here. You try it on your own. Is that right? Okay. And again, though, it's a very complicated three-dimensional diagram because, Callum, what we're saying then is since magnetic fields point from north to south, what I'm really finding is the magnetic field outside the solenoid would point this way, which means above the solenoid it would point to the left, but inside the solenoid it's going to point to the right. And if you put a piece of iron inside the solenoid, just like when you uh, touch a uh, magnet to metal, the metal becomes magnetized, the iron will become magnetized, making this much, much, much stronger. The third one, the toughest one. Suppose we have a wire carrying current through a magnetic field. Now, there's my attempt at a picture. What direction is the current going in the wire? No hands yet, Claire. <coughs> what direction is the current going in the wire? Can you all label that, put arrows, and then over here put a letter I for current? What direction am I trying to show the magnetic field is? <coughs> out of the paper towards us. It turns out the magnetic field will exert a force on the moving charges in the wire. Really? Put your pencils down. So we just watched the video showing the actual demonstration. Petra, you saw the wire jumping like crazy. What we want to ask ourselves is, can we predict the direction? Can we predict, oh, was it jumping? Yes. Was there a force acting on it then? Yes. Okay. To find the direction. You point your right thumb in the direction of the magnetic field. All of you do that right now, please. I think it's that way, right, Callum? You pointed your th up, right? Sorry, I said that totally wrong. Did I say magnetic field? I read that wrong. Point your right thumb in the direction of the current. So you know what? All of you lift your pieces of paper vertically so that they're in the same direction as my board, your right thumb is going to get pointed this way. You extend your, your fingers like you're doing a high five, so don't bend them, don't bend them. It has to be a flat hand like you're giving a high five. You point your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. What direction is the magnetic field? Out of the page, it means you have to bend your hand 90 degrees. Okay? Not your fingers, your, your whole wrist. Okay? Your palm points in the direction of the net force. Which way is your palm pointing? Down the page. Yeah, you're going to have to be a little flexible. Current, magnetic field, palm points in which direction? And I always just imagine my palm is pushing. That's the direction the force is going to feel. This is called the right-hand motor rule. 
and it explains, believe it or not, how electric motors work. We're going to flog this to death. So in the above example, the net force would be down the page. Let's try another one. And again, until we get good, lift your piece of paper up so it's vertical, matching my board. What direction is the current? Vertical, Ashley, not flat. Lift your paper up vertically. Okay. What direction is the current? So all of us would point our right thumbs into the page. What direction is the magnetic field? Now, for me, because I'm standing up, I can go like this. I'll bend like this and face you guys. What direction is your palm pointing? Up. This wire would get forced up the page. Up the page. It's tricky. And it's also tricky because I can only do this as a demonstration. Uh, I pity the poor people that aren't here and trying to listen to this on the internet. I've never yet had a kid figure this out from the internet. You need to see it done. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. Let's go back to that uh, handy dandy little uh, right hand rule question handout. Number two. Number two, which actually ends up being on the second page because I couldn't get the spacing to work. Okay, here is a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Point your right thumb in the direction. Hard joke, find this one. Okay, number two, we're going to practice this. Ready, hard joke? Lift your piece of paper up vertically so it matches mine. Point your right thumb in the direction of the current. Yep. Like you're giving a high five, point your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. And all of you look up. Do not do this. That's wrong. You have to keep your hand flat. So if you're going to bend like that or like that, or rotate your paper 90 degrees if you have to. But you guys facing this way, I think it's just like this, yes? Which way is your palm pointing? That's the direction of the force. A, B, C, or D. What's the correct answer? Into the page. OK? And the problem here, by the way, is what I'm really doing is I'm teaching you vector multiplication. This is a vector times equation called a cross product. And it turns out, and those of you that take physics next year, you'll find out that way times this way is down. This way, cross up is behind me. So your right hand rule has a convenient vector multiplication algorithm and you memorize it. Oh, behind me, cross up is to my left. It is, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's called a cross product, okay? It's the right hand rule and this is your first experience with it. You point your thumb in the direction of the first vector, you extend your fingers in the direction of the second vector, and your palm points in the product direction. If you're doing a cross product, you'll learn that next year. Uh, oh, also, you'll see some teachers teach it this way. They go thumb, index finger, and then they point their middle finger in the direction of the product. I can't bend my hand like that. I can only go, okay, if I, as soon as I start to bend one finger, these guys all, ugh. My, I got this issue, okay? My fingers, I got knuckles that kind of crack in places. So anyways, I go thumb, all four fingers, palm. There's several different ways to do it. Let's try another one. Number three. Now, this is not a wire, but this is a proton moving. Wait a minute. Isn't current protons moving inside of a wire? So I can pretend this is like a wire. Which way is the current moving? Which way is the proton moving? Uh, that way. So I'm going to point my thumb kind of into the page at a slight angle. What direction is the magnetic field? All magnetic fields point from what to what? You know what? Let's draw in the magnetic field like that so that I know that's the magnetic field from north to south. So now we're talking, this is how particle accelerators and particle deflectors work. This proton traveling into the page hits a magnetic field that extends to points to the right. Ugh. What direction will this proton be deflected? A, B, C, or D? 
A, B, C, or D? B, toward the bottom of the page. Ready, Nate? Yep, ready? Um, okay, uh, number 11, which actually has the whole question on the next page. Okay, instead of a wire, we're just having a single positive charge. But again, all a current carrying wire is, Nathan, is a whole bunch of positive charges holding hands. So the work on one charge. Which way is that positive charge point uh, traveling? To the right. Point your right thumb to the right. Which way is the magnetic field? What do those X's mean? So extend your fingers like you're high-fiving. Don't bend them. Point those fingers into the page. You've got to bend your wrist. Yes. Which way is your palm pointing? So A, B, C, or D? Yep. OK. I, sorry, there's no easy way for me to show this except to pick on people. Uh, by the way, this is also why I said, if you want to do this wrong, have your hands all tucked in. You'll get it wrong. You've got to get your hands out. OK. Hey, number 12. Number 12. Okay. Ready, Ashley? To help, are you getting the hang of this? You need some help. I'm going to walk you through this. Ready, 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 ready? First of all, number 12, I've got to figure out which way the current is going. Well, current is going this way. Down. You know what? In this wire that's in the magnetic field, current is going up and away from me. Is that okay? So point your thumb into the page. Which way is the magnetic field? Put your thumb down. Which way do magnetic fields always point? Let's pick up our pencil. Let's draw them in. Do not try and do it in your head. So draw the magnetic field lines like that. Now let's put our pen down again. Right thumb is the current, so point your right thumb in the direction of the current. Magnetic field is which way? To the right. So you ready? I would go like this. Right thumb here. Now to get to the right, I guess I kind of, I kind of, I gotta do a little, little yoga, right? Right? Don't do that though. Bend your elbow. Yeah, I can bend my elbow. There you go. There you go. Which way is your palm pointing? So A, B, C, or D? Did you say B? You be right. <clears throat> okay. So, Elijah, first of all, wires get deflected, but also individual charges will get deflected. Protons, oh, and electrons. Now, for an electron, I just reverse everything, and here's what I mean. An electron traveling to the left is the same as a proton traveling to the right. An electron going up the page is the same as a proton going down the page. An electron coming towards me is the same as a proton going away from me. Why am I talking about electrons so much? Because Neve, those are the ones that we move around most, actually, because those are the ones on the outside of the atom. Really, we don't move protons around much. OK? Getting all, I know, a little, little loosen up here. Back to the notes, then. OK? Uh, example eight. <coughs> Okay. An electron traveling to the right enters a magnetic field as shown. What's the direction of the net force on the electron? Which way is the electron traveling? We don't deal with electrons. What's that mathematically the same as? A proton traveling to the? So all of you point your right thumbs pointing to the left. Which way is the magnetic field? Okay. The electron is going to get deflected. This is the most important right-hand rule to wrap your brain around, and we're going to spend lots of time on it. Hey, you know what? If the electron is getting deflected, if the wire was jumping, it must be experiencing a force. We're first of all going to look at the magnitude of the force on a single solitary charge. What is the magnitude of the force on a single solitary charge? Here is your first equation for this new unit. 
What does B stand for? Magnetic field. The force caused by the magnetic field, FB, equals QVB, where Q equals how big the charge is, V equals the speed of the moving charge, and B equals the magnetic field. And remember, magnetic field is measured in Teslas. Speed is measured in meters per second, and charge is measured in coulombs. Hard joke, Claire, we figure it out or not? Yeah. I'll come back to it, but need you with me here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I have to add a condition, actually. Do you notice your right-hand rule? My thumb, my fingers, and my palm are all perpendicular to each other. So we say this only works if all of these are at right angles to each other. So add a little perpendicular symbol. This equation is on your formula sheet, but without the perpendicular symbol thingies. Uh, sometimes the charges don't move perpendicular. In that case, well, then you use the perpendicular component of the magnetic field. Having said that, we're never going to deal with that this year. I pointed that out because I'm a nerd and because someone almost always asks, hey, what if they're not perpendicular? Hey, what if they're parallel? Well. The actual equation then is this, Q, V, B, sine theta. If theta equals 90 degrees, what's the sine of 90 degrees? If they are perpendicular, what's the sine of 90 degrees? 1, which means you just end up with that equation, the one I gave you. Uh, if they're parallel, which would mean uh, zero degrees, if the charge is traveling parallel to the magnetic field, what's the sign of, whoop, not theta, what's the sign of zero degrees? Zero. You have no, no force. No force. So I said blah, 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 blah. Here's where I said sine theta is zero. No force if they move parallel. Hey, that makes a good test question. <clears throat> so the maximum force is experienced when the charge is moving perpendicularly to the magnetic field. Uh, by the way, if you scroll back for one second, Charge has no direction. I really shouldn't have put a perpendicular on the Q. It's the velocity and the, or the speed and the magnetic field have to be perpendicular to each other. So scribble out the perpendicular there. Let's use this. A proton moving at 1.7 times 10 to the sixth meters per second enters a 0.15 Tesla magnetic field at, oh, oh, oh. Right angles. What's the net force on the proton? What's pushing it? What's causing it to move? A magnetic force. How do I calculate magnetic force? Q, V, B, our new equation. OK. Well, let's see. What's Q? Oh, that's the charge on a proton. Or as I said a couple of units ago, it's a proton. What is the charge on a proton? One point six times 10 to the negative 19. Is that what you meant to say? 
Well, that's the elementary charge. Electron will be negative. We don't care about the negative part. We just want the magnitude. V, how fast is it traveling? 1.7 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. B, the magnetic field in Tesla's How many newtons of force will this proton feel? I get 4.08 times 10 to negative 14 newtons. Anybody else? Yeah? Which may not seem like very much. But what does the second part of the last part of this question ask? Oh, what did I just find? Oh, well, also, it's going to be 4.08 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by what's the mass? It's a proton. It's on your sheet somewhere. <coughs> it's one point something. It's 1.67, but I can never remember the 10 to the negative 27. Uh, it's accelerate. Holy smokes. It's undergoing a huge acceleration. It's experiencing a force, a force to be reckoned with, so to speak. Put your pencils down. So I've given you lesson two. I call this calculating forces and fields. By the way, your homework is going to be all of the questions from that right-hand rules handout that I gave you. That's your homework for Friday. And I've uh, attached the answers so you can double check. That's your practice for right-hand rules. But I want to show you some neat applications. We just finished saying to you, the magnetic force on a particle moving perpendicular can be calculated by uh, Q, V, B, as long as V and B are perpendicular. So consider this electron. Okay, we're firing an electron from an electron gun. What direction is the electron traveling? To the? That's the same as, because we don't deal with electrons, current is positive charges. Uh, that's the same as a proton traveling which way? So all of you point your right thumbs to the left. What direction is the magnetic field? Down. So which way will the electron be deflected? So which direction is the magnetic field into the page? Right? Magnetic field's into the page. What direction will this electron be deflected? Down the page. So watch. It won't feel anything right in here, no magnetic field. But as soon as it gets right here, it's going to get deflected downwards. So now, instead of traveling to the right, now it's traveling that way. An electron traveling down that way is the same as a proton traveling which way? Up this way? Yes? Magnetic field still into the page. Which way will it get deflected? Kind of in that direction. So now it's going to be traveling, don't write this down, like this. Now it's traveling that way. Point your thumbs up. Magnetic field into the page. Which way will it get deflected now? To the? Left. As a matter of fact, here's what's really going to happen. Now you can write this down. The electron is going to get deflected in a circle. A half circle, but a circle. Okay? It's going to get deflected in a circle. Hey, the electron will be forced into a circle. This is why the Large Hadron Collider is circular. 
this is why most particle accelerators, there's two types of particle accelerators or particle colliders or particle slashers, smashers. Linear straight line ones, but most of them are circular. Why? Because it's really easy to bend charges into a circle with magnets. In fact, what we can say is this. What path is this electron tracing out? What shape is this electron tracing out? What force is pushing it in a circle? So remember we did gravity equals centripetal force back when we were looking at orbits? Well now for particle accelerators we can say, hey, magnets equals magnetic force equals centripetal force. In fact, we can say this. QVB equals MV squared over R. And yes, one of the V's will cancel. What it means then, Hakeem, is if I know, for example, some of these, I can find others of these. This is where I can start to look at, for example, if I know the radius, because maybe I have this going through a photographic plate, which is what they used to do in the old days, and I just measure the radius with a ruler, I can start to figure out either what charge it was, or how massive it was, or how fast it was traveling. Is Elijah awake? Okay. So, an electron moving at 3.2 times 10 to the 6th meters per second enters a perpendicular 0.545 big Tesla magnetic field and traces out a circular path. What's the radius of this path? What path are we tracing out? Oh, so we can say magnetic force is pushing me in a circle. We can say QV B equals M V squared over R. By the way, I use the V squared over R and not the 4 pi squared R over T squared because there's V's in the other side as well. Yay. What do they want me to find? Oh, let's get the R by itself. How? I think I'm going to move the uh, R to the top and the QB to the bottom. I think I'm going to get R equals MV over QB. Oh, by the way, what's mass times velocity? Momentum. Turns out I can even calculate an object's momentum even if I don't, if I got the MV by itself, even if I didn't know its mass or its velocity, I can still find its momentum, which comes in handy for other stuff. Anyways, uh, here we go. M, it's an electron. V. 3.2 times 10 to the 6, the question told me. Q, it's an electron. B, now this is the magnetic field in Teslas, which is 0.45. If I was building a particle accelerator that did this, what would the radius be? You get, uh, is that right? 3.3? Bad numbers that I've made up. I've got this thing going probably way too slow. That's a really small radius. Usually you can get it to, to a, or you know what, I need a bigger magnetic field maybe. No, bigger magnetic field will make it smaller. My magnetic field's too big, it's deflecting it too much. That's what it is. 3.34 uh, times 10 to negative 5 meters. 
By the way, what if I ran a proton through this same experiment? Would it be deflected more or less or the same? Would it have a bigger radius, a smaller radius, or the same size radius? Convince me. So if the mass is bigger, a bigger number up here, wouldn't that make the radius bigger? This number for a proton would be bigger or smaller? Bigger. So if I have a bigger number on top of a fraction, is my new answer going to be bigger or smaller? Bigger. It's more massive, it doesn't get deflected as much. It's gonna be a bigger radius.